my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The wall shall rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek out, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me. And answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said, the, thy face, Lord, will I see. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. For when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had waited, fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness of a, thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. For he is the king of glory. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust and never let me be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear. Blessed is the man that make the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, 
nor such as turn aside to lies. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The psalmist says that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You may be seated. We come to praise the Lord today. We come to lift him up and magnify him. Again, the psalmist says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. I want to know if I've got any praises in the house today. I want to know if I've got any redeemed people in the house to know that this is not the end of the story that we've still got somebody to praise God for. we got a reason to praise God. So can we just bless the Lord? I know we got to struggle. Hallelujah. But we get beyond who we are. We didn't come, hallelujah, to thank of ourselves, but we come to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Come on, choir, give us a celebration.
it's good to know that God is unchanging. Everything else is changing in this world, but we can depend on God. We can hold on to his unchanging hand. And even when we let go, we are still in his hand. Because he says, no man can pluck you out of my hand. And it's good to know that we are safe and secure in the hands of Jesus. So we just come to clear, encourage the family today. Yeah. We know what you're going through, but God's got a hand that can hold you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He won't let you fall. You just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and see if he won't bring you out. Because he promised you that joy is going to come in the morning. Hallelujah. Because he don't change his word. You can stand on his word. Amen. We're going to follow Amen. the program scriptures. We got Old Testament by Reverend Charles Cypress, New Testament by Reverend Lawrence Bill, and Prayer of Comfort by Reverend Jake, James Charity. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who have blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We bless God for the song that was just rendered whole to his hand. And I can recall hearing Brother Blunt saying, I can't even walk. Amen. Somebody said he had another signature song, but that to me, that was his signature song. Yes, sir. Without you holding yes, my hand yes, to Miss Kitty and the Blunt family. Old Testament scripture today, Psalms 90. And I believe Brother Blunt could say this. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. For the mountains were brought forth wherever thou had its Form the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou hast turned man to destruction and says, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carest away them as a flood, and they are as a sleep. The morning they are like the grass which groweth up. The morning it flourishes and groweth up, and in the evening is cut down and withereth. We are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath, and we spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore and ten, and by reason of strength, they may be fourscore years. Yet, it, in their strength, labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off. And we are fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger according to thy fear as to thy wrath. Verse 12. So Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. But bless God for the reading of these scriptures. May these truths sing.
children, grandchildren, my wife, my goddaughter. I feel that I'm related to every family in this church. So I pray for you that God will continue to bless you. I remember a deceased brother because uh, he sat across the aisle from me uh, practically every Sunday. Both of us were in a race. Good afternoon to all. I greet you with the joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and His peace. To the Smith family, I love you all. Came up like a little blood breaks together. <clears throat> Get a joy with somebody special. Want. Encouraging. I enjoy them every time I got this company. But I say to all of you, if you live for the God that He sang about, excited about going there. Yes, Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven. Amen. And none of us deserve to be there. That's why we pray. Yes, 
that God would give us the strength. Give us strength. Let us pray. Yes, sir. Most gracious, eternal Father, God we bless you. The God that's above all God. Yes, Lord. Thou who art the supreme yes. and the eternal. Yes. Thou who spoke and said, Let it be. And whatever thou said, it was. Yes. Let there be light. Yes. And it shone before the moon even yes. came. Or the sun was put in the sky. Yes. You brought forth light. Yes. So we come today and say, you are God. Yes. And you're God all by yourself. Yes. Many false gods. But you are the true and living God. Hallelujah. And you stretched out your mercy and your grace. And made a man by the name of Adam. Not like anything else you ever made, but you made him in your likeness and in your image. And he was stretched out like a dead man until you breathed your spirit in him and he became a living soul. And because of that, oh God, we stand here today to say thank you for your breath, for your spirit, for your peace and for your life. Because the 96 plus years, you speak that old joke through all his mess and misunderstanding. Yes. Yet your grace and mercy was sufficient. Yes. Plus 40 plus years, him and Kitty put up with each other because of what you done. And you allowed by grace and mercy. So we come today to celebrate life and not death. We come to celebrate joy, the gladness, and serenity in our hearts and minds. He said he couldn't even walk without you holding his hand. And Father, we come today, thank you for holding all our hands. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Your grace has been sufficient. And because of your God, as we come for this ongoing service, we ask that the Holy Spirit, some folks call him the Holy Ghost, will rule and super rule and get our minds off of what we see and look to your heels on which comes our help when we don't see. Let your spirit move and super rule and comfort the family, those that have traveled far and near. Anybody here got an order against anybody? Lord, prick the heart right now and let them realize that if you forgive one another, you will forgive us. If we love one another, you will love us even more. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, turn down the mountains of Satan and Lord, raise us up from the valley of your peace and your love and put us on a mountaintop that we may learn to live together in harmony and in peace. And Father, when all said and done, we want to thank you for that cross that you prepared for yourself. Yes. That when we need a savior, we can save ourselves. Yes. But you wrapped yourself in swaddling clothing. Yes. Came down through these generations of time. Yes. And from eternity to us, that we may have a savior. And his name shall be called Jesus. That yes. he shall save his people Woo! from their sins. Hey, glory, hallelujah, God. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for his suffering and he died that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for your peace now. Thank you for your serenity and thank you for your love. That he hung there and bled there and died there. But he should just give me three days and I'll rise again. Touch now, God, with the risen power of your anointing that brought him from the dead and said, look now, I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore. We are going over to a city. But Job declared, the wicked shall cease from troubling us, and our weary souls shall be at rest. Until that day come, let us be excited with loving one another, serving you while we still have a chance. And just in case, if there's someone here today that do not know you and the pardon of the sins, and have a problem with Jesus, may the word that come forth from Pastor Baltimore will convict their hearts, and your Holy Spirit knock at their door, and they will open the door and let you in. Because you said, if you open the door, I'll come in and sup with you. Yes. Thank you now for being that kind of God of mercy and for being the God of grace. And most of all, that you have prepared a place that when this time comes in our life or my life, we don't have to worry about this old world no more. But go into your eternal realm where we shall never have to depart from you anymore. But we can get up our love once again and gather and have a best time. Well, have to be in a body where we're high blood, low blood, no blood, out high, high blood. Our brightest, our very sighted, all the rest of this boy. We can be in a brand new body. Ha! And we can see one another again. And to that day, thank you for all you look beyond our thoughts and take care of our needs even today. Some God of believe said thank you. 
but your mercy and your grace pleaded their cases. Thank you, Father, for that. And when all is said and done, only what we do in Christ is going to last anyway. May this be a homegoing celebration that draws us clear to our home that we're going over there, that we don't have to worry about departing no more. When we come back this way, it will be for eternity. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. We love you. And we always say no to the devil. Say you lose again. And God will get the glory and got the glory. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. This is not all there is. And then the song says, just a few more weary days. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord is sure to come Amen. and soon to come. Soon. Praise the Lord. We're going to follow the program. Uh, uh, in addition to solo, it's going to be by Mrs. Yvonne Boone. is looking down on me. Heaven is looking down on me. When my friends do Heaven 
that we have that we're not traveling this road by ourselves yeah. and in fact Hebrews tell us that we've got a great cloud of witnesses that's, that's looking down on us encouraging us as we do our walk now we will have acknowledgments by the church clerk and then we will have an acknowledgment of clergy by Pastor Wendell Waller Good morning, all. Good morning. To Kitty and Mr. Blunt's adult children and grands, and to all assembled today, I just first would like to say we grieve with you. We love Mr. Blunt. He's not just yours, but he's ours also. Amen. So we send you our prayers and our condolences. There are a few cards that have come in, I'm only gonna read a couple of them and then some letters from the churches. With caring sympathy in the loss of your husband, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. With God, love lives forever. <laughs> May the compassion of those who care surround you, the memories of joy shared encourage you, and the warmth of God's love embrace you. Hold on because God is with you always with love, Virginia. Keeping you close and caring thoughts and prayers. Though your heart must hold deep sadness at the loss of your loved one, may it also hold the blessings of the life you shared and the love that will always be a part of you. Praying that God will comfort your heart uplift your spirit, and carry you through this time of sadness to a place of peace, with deepest sympathy to Mrs. Blunt from Mary. With sympathy in the loss of your loved one, life is a journey of sweetness and sorrow, of yesterday's memories and hopes for tomorrow, of pathways we choose and detours we face, with patience and humor, courage and grace, of joys that we've shared and of people we've met who have touched us in ways we will never forget. As you go through this time of sadness, may you know in your heart how very much others care. Sincerely, your neighbor. Christian Home Baptist Church, Windsor, Virginia. To the family of Joe Nathan Blunt Sr., we, the pastor, officers, members, and friends of Christian Home Baptist Church, would like to express to you our deepest and heartfelt sympathy in the passing of Joe Nathan Blunt Sr. Today, we, know you, we want you to know that we stand with you and we offer you our prayers. We pray that God would provide you and your family with comfort and strength during this time of bereavement. Although the death of someone we love is never easy, we have pleasant memories that time and death can never erase. We want you to wait patiently upon the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Many have traveled the road you travel today and were strengthened and encouraged by God's abiding presence and his amazing grace. Remain steadfast and unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. In his service, Wendell M. Waller, pastor, 
Christian Home Baptist Church. Wakefield Christian Outreach Center, Wakefield, Virginia. An expression of sympathy to the family of the late Mr. Joe Blunt Sr. At this time of sorrow and despair, we the members of Wakefield Christian Outreach Center would like to express our heartfelt sympathy in hearing of the passing of Mr. Blunt. It is with tenderness of heart that we hear the passing of your beloved husband, father, grandfather, uncle, brother, and loved one. We are grateful for him. We thank God for his life and the precious memories he leaves behind. To cherish the memories and continue his legacy, we cannot find the words to say other than God loves you and have chosen your love one, to bring us together to comfort and console each other in this hour of bereavement. We find comfort in the words of our Lord who stated, to cast all of our cares on him, for he cares for you. To the family, our God is a God of comfort, who comforts us in our tribulations. You have the strength of God and the togetherness of family to sustain you. You are in our thoughts and our prayers. Prayerfully submitted, Wakefield Christian Outreach Center family, Elder Charles Cypress Sr., Elder Charles Cypress Sr. Pastor. Mount Nebo Baptist Church, Surrey, Virginia, to the family of Mr. Joe Nathan Blunt Sr. Words cannot truly express our condolences during the transitioning of your beloved husband, father, grandfather, family member, friend. Mr. Joe N. Blunt, Sr. Although we share in your grief, please know that your Mount Nebo Baptist Church family's thoughts and prayers are with you and your family as you celebrate this home going. We pray that you will feel the comforting presence of God's Holy Spirit during this trying time. Until his health prevented it, Mr. Blunt was faithful in attendance and service to Mount Nebo. Although he was currently our oldest member, his presence was seen and heard, and his voice heard. He had a beautiful voice and loved to sing, especially with the Mount Nebo male chorus. He touched the hearts of many when he blessed us with, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. He helped us to believe, yes, God is real. Family and friends, it is okay to mourn. For Psalms 5, 5 says, blessed are they that mourn. But know that you shall be comforted. Also know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Most importantly, our friends, we want you to know the truth about those who have died so that you will not be sad as those who have no hope. The words of Jesus and the good news of the Bible offer comfort and bring a hope that can make the dark days of grief a little sunnier. We know that you have many memories of Mr. Blunt and you will bring great, they will bring you great joy and laughter. And his memory will live on in the hearts of those who know and love him. We are wishing you all the peace and comfort possible. Again, our prayers and thoughts are with you. With sympathy and love, the Mount Nebo Baptist Church family, Reverend Daniel L. Baltimore, pastor, Deacon John W. Pierce, chairman of the Board of Deacons, yours truly, Evelyn Ellis, church clerk. And then I have a poem, a poem that I want to read. I'm going to miss you, my loving husband, Joe Nathan Blunt, Sr. When tomorrow comes and I realize that God has called you home, my heart will have an empty void, and I'll feel so all alone. A perfect example of God's word, when he spoke on living long life, he blessed you with 96 wonderful years and a loving and devoted wife. And 40 long years, we were one. Tests and trials, we made it through. It's going to be hard to imagine life now just knowing that I won't have you. I didn't have to want for anything. You made me a happy wife. 
as we grew up and old together, we were just walking, making the best of life. Cowboys, Westerns, and Family Feud have lost a faithful fan. We enjoyed watching them all together, holding on to each other's hands. I love you, Joe. You were my everything. But now you finished your race. Rest in peace in your heavenly home. Until again, I'll see your face. Your loving wife, Kitty. And on behalf of the family, I would just like to say to all of in attendance, all who have expressed their sympathy, whether by way of phone calls, cards, whatever your motions may have been to let them know that you think about and care for them, thank you so very much. Grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied unto you, to the Blunt family. I have been asked to share some brief remarks on behalf of the clergy. I'm going to ask of all members of the clergy if they would stand at this time so the family might know who's here to be in support of them in their time of bereavement. All members of the clergy, if you would stand. Amen. Amen. I would like for the uh, Blunt family to know and to understand that whenever you come to a time such as this, whenever we come to a funeral service, it is always a time for us to remember, to remember the life of the person that has passed. And we've shared today, you've heard today, some wonderful memories about uh, Brother Blunt. And that's part of the reason why we're here. We're here so that we might be able to remember what his life has meant to all of you, both family members as well as friends. But we've also gathered so that we might rejoice and that we might give God thanks. For 96 years of life, that's a long time to be living. And so we have come that we might thank God. For, for that which the Lord has done. But then the last reason that we're here is to reaffirm the promise that God has made. Yes. That is through his word, we are reminded that if this earthly house, if this tabernacle of God be dissolved, that we got another building, not made with hands, but eternal in the kingdom. And so when we gather in these moments, we're coming that we might reaffirm what God has promised to us in his word. May God continue to strengthen you, and may God continue to give you strength to make it through another day. Amen. Right. <clears throat> On the program, it says uh, silent reading of obituary. If you have not already read it, we're going to ask you to do that at your leisure. I want to read the poem that's on the back that says, Just a Thought, in memory of a wonderful husband, dad, uncle, brother, cuz. Rest in peace. Death leaves a heartache that no one can heal and a memory no one can steal. Although it's difficult today to see beyond the sorrow, May looking back in memories comfort your tomorrow. In closing, if tears could build a stairway and memories a lane, I'll walk right up to heaven and bring you home again. Love always the family. Now we'll have reflections by Bishop Arthur Blunt and then the musical selection for the male chorus, followed by the eulogy from Pastor Baltimore.
want to tell you that God is still good. God do not make no mistake. We come to celebrate the home going of my beloved uncle, Joe Blunt. There's a lot of memories that I have with him. And I'm not going to tell them all today. But I thank God for the time that God has given him to us. I wasn't there the whole 96 years. But there was a blessing to live 96 years old. We ought to give God the praise for that. Because a lot of people are being cut off at their early age. But thanks be to God, he's the one that gives us such a victory, y'all. And I thank God I will miss my uncle, whom I love, and my family. I don't care what the enemy say. I still love y'all. So we got that straight now. Because if I don't have the love of God in me, hell will be my home. I'm not here to sugarcoat it, y'all. But thank God, as I got the call last Friday, I believe, Bobby, that he had your phone from the hospital. And I thought it was my cousin Bobby because on my phone, his name popped up. But when he began to talk, it was my uncle talking. And he was sounding real good. And then that Sunday morning when I was walking out the house, I got a call from my cousin telling me that he had gone on. And I said, Lord, I thank you. Why is that, Bishop? Because the Lord said, in everything, give him thanks. That's one thing I don't forget, God. And I thank God there was times he would come to the church. They would surprise me. And he would call my cousin first to make sure that I would be there because the name of our church is Highway, Christian Church of Christ. That means we stay on the go line. So he didn't want to show up and nobody would be there. So he had a way of getting around it. He would call my cousin. He said, Bishop going to be there today. He said, yeah. And then when I come out of the office, I see him and Kitty sitting in the sanctuary. That did my heart real good. And I'll never forget the last song he sung, and everybody was talking about it today. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. But to the family and to those that are under the sound of my voice, if you are not saved, it's time to get right. Time is really getting short now. We don't know when our time is coming, but it behooves us to be ready. God is looking for people that's going to serve him. Not to be halfway lukewarm. You either serve God or you don't. Huh? I'm telling you this because I love y'all. And I thank God for my uncle. Praise the Lord. He would call me and I would call him. I would go see him. And sometimes Pastor Baltimore, when I called, he said, I was about to call you. I said, well, I beat you to it. <laughs> and sometimes it would be the other way around. But we always communicated, and before he left this earth, he told me, he said, I'm 96 years old. I done lived my life in somebody else's. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. 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 He's worth of all the praise. To the family, my prayers are with you. Again, I love you all. Pray for us in Jesus' name. Thank you. All right.
can do is holy fire. I couldn't feel him at all. He would still be real. And you know what? He'll still be who his word says that he is. Not what sometimes I dream up that he may be in my mind, but he is who his word. How many know he is who his word says he is? It's good to be able to feel him, but it's better to know that he's there even when you can't feel him. Anybody feel like being, you don't feel him all the time. But if you know he's there all the time, it doesn't matter whether you feel him or not. Somebody say amen. And to uh, this, these distinguished clergy that are here today is with us and those in the audience, and to uh, Bishop Blunt, who I think I've met for the first time, thank you for those words of reflection, oh, yeah. inspiration and to the Blunt and Smith family, I thank God for you. We've been together a long time. Amen, we've shared many things together. We've shared births and deaths. We've shared weddings and children's dedication. We've shared sporting events. We've shared family reunions. Amen. And I thank God that allows us to share this homegoing service today. To my friend and sister, Sister Kitty and family, you've done well. Amen. You modeled what a relationship ordained by God is. Through the ups and downs, through the dark moments, through the bright moments. You and Joe have stuck it. That's your testimony. If you never say another word, that will always be your testimony that in this age that we need to know that God is real. Joe is rejoicing today. By the way, he's not there. Joe is rejoicing today as he can look and see all of his family and friends assembled here today. And it's not even a family reunion as such. We're here celebrating a homegoing and remembering. From all that I can tell, Joe loved his family. Joe loved his God. And Joe loved his church. Amen. And just a side note, Joe loved to dress right. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look good and drive a shiny big car. 
Amen. He wanted it all right. <laughs> Amen. Um, there is a word from the Lord. I won't be long because it just won't take long to say what the Lord wants me to say. All Joe's talk in the waning years of his life was, Pastor, I want to get back to church. Pastor, I want to get back to the choir. I miss being in the choir. He says, I sometimes try to make it, but my health won't quite let me do it. Isn't it nice to have a desire? Many have no health issues, but they have no desire. He didn't just want to come to be a pew member. He wanted to come to sing the songs of Zion. Those songs that ministered to him all of his life. He didn't just sing, uh, can't even walk. He did sing also, yes, God is real. And so many others with his Ray Charles sounding voice. I shall, I shall miss him. And Joe was a great man. I shall miss him. There's a word from the Lord. I want to call it a word of encouragement to fellow believers. A word of encouragement to fellow believers. It's a very familiar funeral verse. Passage scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And the King James Version said, But I do not want you to be ignorant or uninformed, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up or snatched up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Then on the other hand, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9, says this, the evil um, believer will be banished from the presence of the Lord. The evil one will forever be banished from the presence of the Lord. This word of encouragement is embodied in three words itself. Number one, the resurrection of the Lord, number two, the return of the Lord, and number three, the reunion of the believer with the Lord and with each other. The word of encouragement that we offer to the believer today is this. It centers around the resurrection of the Lord, number two, the return of the Lord. How many know he will return? And the reunion of the believer with the Lord and with each other. If you don't get excited about the resurrection, or if it's the key to the third, and you don't get excited about number two, we ought to be excited enough to think about drying our eyes over number three, the reunion of the believer with the Lord. Not only will we be united with the Lord, we will be reunited with each other. Verse 13 of our text begins with, I would not have you to be ignorant uninformed brethren, brethren, fellow believers. These words are a comfort to other believers and not to non-believers. The believer has a present and a future hope. The non-believer has only a now. When his now is past, 
he slips into the endless hopelessness uh, with despair and, and, and further hopelessness. Thus he said, do not sorrow at those who have no hope. How do those who have no hope sorrow? You can tell whether one has hope on how they deal with issues in life that they cannot do anything about. Death is one of those things. Whether you want to or not, it will come to all of us. Whether you're praying person, non-praying person, it's one of those things we have no control over. Then how do you deal with stuff that you have no control over. The non-believer uh, uh, only have his or her grief. Uh, she, uh, he or she is unconsolable. There are no words that can lift them out of the doldrum. Uh, both weep, but the non-believer looks for the reunion at the cemetery. When the, the believer looks for it in the heavens with the Lord. The non-believer, uh, when the funeral is over, when things are past, they find themselves wandering back to the cemetery. They go to the cemetery, sit on this grave, or lie on the grave, crying, trying to talk to mother, or trying to talk to father. But can I help you here? It's all useless. Because the reunion does not occur at the grave. It recurs with the Lord. Oh, I understand what you're doing. The non-believer, tears down their eyes. They're talking to mama, talking to sister, talking to brother. And they come back more depressed than they were when they went down there. You know why? Because the one you're trying to talk to is not there. And so you're talking to just a mound of dirt. And dirt has no air of comforting us. Oh, somebody say amen here. Huh? I, know it, I know it might even make you angry. But, but, but I don't say it to make you angry. I just say it because it's true. Now, I've lost loved ones myself. I sometimes go down to the grave. I sometimes, when I'm up home, go down to where mother and father were buried. Sometimes go where mother lost. Sometimes go where... Uh, other family members are, where the friends are, but you know, I don't talk to them. I go down there to just remember and reflect on what have happened since that happened, on where the Lord have brought me, how the Lord have dealt with me. I go down there and just say, thank you, Lord, for the memory. But I don't ever expect any of them to say anything to me because, because they are not They're not there. And so weep not as those who have no hope. Uh, Lord, hammers, but put your trust in the Lord. In verse 3, in verse 3, in verse 3, in verse 3, now let's go back. Given our position uh, in the Lord Jesus, the apostle tells them in, in chapter 4, verse 1 through 8 in a living translation, finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God. As we have taught you, you live this way already, and we encourage you to do even more. For you remember when, what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus? In verse 3, it says, he elaborates on what they were taught. He said, God's will is for you to live holy. So stay away from sexual sin. And then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and, 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 and his ways. Uh, 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 never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife, for the Lord avenges all such sins, as we have solemnly warned you before. God has called us, you and me, to holy living, not to, not to impure living, but holy living. Therefore, anyone who, ref who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, 
but is rejecting God himself who gives us the blessed Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but we don't need to write you, he tells them, about the importance of living, loving each other. But God himself taught you to love one another. Uh, you already show your love for all the believers uh, through, 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 throughout Macedonia. Even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to live even more. Show even more love to one another. To the family, says to the believers, show even more love. You showed love by showing up today. But it's saying beyond today, show even more love. Pick the one that's unlovable. Show them even more love. Pick the one who does not know the love of Jesus. Show them even more love. Somebody say amen in here. See, you already know about the love of God. But there's some in your midst who have rejected the love of God. By your love for one another, they can see the love of God for them. Right. Oh, Kitty, by the faith, by your faithfulness to Joe and his faithfulness, it teaches us about faithful. Those who say you love would be faithful to them. If you love God, be faithful to God. Somebody say amen in here. Yeah. Somebody say, you, you could not love Joe if you didn't know where you live. Joe couldn't say he loved you if he didn't know how to come home. That's right. Amen. Faithfulness is the epitome of demonstrating love. If we cannot be faithful to each other in our relationship, how can we be faithful to God whom we do not know? God is calling us to a life of faithfulness. Somebody say amen in here. A life of faith. If you know him, he will bless you. Right. He, he is faithful and just, forgiving cleanse of all of our unrighteousness. And so, and, so, and so in this group, to this group, he says, weep not at those who have no hope. They go to the cemetery to speak to one who's not there. Mm -hmm. The word for cemetery means the place of rest. I will not have you uninformed about those that sleep. Did you know that for the believer, death is not really death? But it is sleep. But Jesus died on the cross once and for all that the believer no longer dies but he sleeps. Oh, let me Joe did not die. He went to sleep. Now, the difference between death and sleep is death, you put it away from you and does not expect it to get up again. Sleep. Uh, whether you fall asleep in the chair or fall asleep in the bed, there's an expectation of the one that's sleeping if they're going to wake up when the sleep is over. There's also an expectation of the one who's in the room with them when they fall asleep. You don't annoy them because they're sleeping. You say when they get rested, he'll wake up. There's an expectation to the sleeper that when I get my rest, I'm going to wake up. And expectation those who know him know that he's going to wake up in the morning. So if you have no expectation of waking up when you, then that's called death. But if you know... That's why Joe couldn't lay down because it was just a rest period. You know, in the morning come. You all didn't hear me. Morning means that when night is over, the period of rest is over, the sleep. When the morning come, Joe knew he was going to wipe his eyes and get up from this quiet because death for the believer is not death. I died once, just like Jesus, but not die again. You see, I died once, but... When I accepted him as my savior, the Lord hammered, my death was swallowed up in his victory. And so now here's the first, here's the first word of comfort, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. You see, that was a problem between man and God. Man was sinful by nature. God is holy and righteous. So an unholy man could not communicate with the righteous God without dying. 
And so God, in the process of time, gave his only begotten son, named called Jesus, put on a robe of flesh like a man, went down through 40 and two generations, and died on the cross. And the word said it pleased God that he gave it. Like, died on the cross. Now, the resurrection ain't just about death. If it's about death, that would be it. Resurrection means that he died. He was in a grave. The grave is proof that he died. You don't bury something that's not dead. The grave is proof that he died. But, but on the other side of the grave, he got up. So when I put my faith in him, I die. The proof that I die is we've gathered here today. And eventually, but, but the proof that but, but I got up because I'm going to get up when he gets up. I, I, I don't believe you're here. Watch what I said. When the resurrection, there's things that need to be dealt with. There's the, the death frees us from the penalty of sin. Ah, that's what puts us estranged with God. When we have faith in his death, it frees us of the penalty of sin. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It not only frees us from the penalty of sin, it frees us from the power of sin. When we accept the Lord as our Savior, the grace of our Lord gives us power to live right. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If you say you're saved and can't live right, then maybe you not die to death by faith in Christ. And so the death of Christ frees us from the penalty. Oh, y'all not hear me. It, it, it frees us from the power of sin. But when he gets up, it frees us from the presence of sin. Uh, death, death deals with the penalty. That is a penalty. Uh, anybody believe on the Lord Jesus? Well, well, well. That was a penalty for your sin before that. But once you start believing, he frees you of that. And by faith you die with him. Lord. And, and, when you, and when he got up, he frees you from the power to hold you down. Some may have gone through some rough times in life, but I came to that same power that will get you to heaven. It will help you get up where you are right now. You may be facing more life than you know what to deal with. Problems on every hand. This power, not just for when I die, this power helped me live right now. When you don't know what you're going to do, where you're going to go, how you're going to do it with, and everybody pointing their fingers at you, if they accept it, he'll give you power to get up from whatever puts you down. Anybody been put down in here today? If you just trust in the Lord, you can't stay down because his power will lift you. Oh, oh, oh. The power. I get serious about these funerals. Every day I live. I've had some things spoke over me, uh, that whether they're going to live or die. But all I know, every time it's spoke, God's power yes. have lifted me up and delivered me. Yes. I've had cancer spoke over my life. But every time I speak to Jesus, yes. y'all ain't hear me. On, you remind me that Jesus got authority over cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I've, been, I've been down and busted. Yeah. Not knowing how I'm going to make it, Doug, but the power, the power that resurrected Jesus yeah. lives on the inside of me. Lord. And when the enemy tells me you can't take it, I say I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Somebody need to hear that in here. The same power is why you're standing now. You know what else he does? It says it frees us from the presence of sin. When he was resurrected back to heaven, a sin, it frees us from the presence of sin. That is a progressive work. As long as we're here, we've been progressively sanctified until we get our new bodies in heaven. Won't be no sin, no more death, no more pain. And so, and so that's the first point of, uh, of our encouragement, our comfort, that, that, that if we have faith, in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Then there's, there's another one. The second point is that, that, that the return of the Lord Jesus. 
he tells them, I don't want you to be ignorant about those that sleep. Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, what was happening to the Thessalonian church was that lived, they'd just become new converts. And they've been so caught up in Jesus' return. They thought his return was imminent. But when it didn't come imminently, many who were the leaders of the church now were dead. And they're thinking they're going to miss the second coming of Jesus. And Paul said, I would not have you be ignorant about that, of those who sleep. Somebody say amen here. Now, they're not going to miss out. He said, because when he come again, they're going to get up first. Lord have mercy. Joe, I thought, of, thought I'd like to be first. But, but you know what? He's, go, he's sleeping now, and he's going to get among those who get up first. But that's not up. See, now my wife's watching. Watch so, so there's he. How many know he's coming back again? I don't believe he, Is he coming back again? Amen. He's coming back again. He's coming back again now. now. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the second thing. But, but, but you know what? That's also going to be a reunion. When I first came here, some of them reunions, I found out they're really reunions. I used to like go to them Smith reunions. That every kind of Smith known to man that was at the reunion. Some good Smiths, some not so good Smiths. we were all there together. And they put on the big pot and the little pot. Somebody making those yeast rolls and fried chicken and, and, and we just enjoyed being together. Now, I wasn't a smith, but they accepted me at the table like a smith. Oh, somebody say amen in here. And in this, but, but that was, and, and every year they had that reunion. Anybody, anybody remember your reunions? Y'all stopped everything you did. I'm going to the final reunion. I'm coming from Maryland, D.C., New Jersey, North Carolina. I, and y'all, y'all parted all weekend long. But, but, but that, that's not the real thing. Lord, have you thought, if you thought that was something, come on, come on. let me tell you about the reunion of the believers. Uh, won't be no troublemakers there. Won't be no whoremongers there. Somebody say, won't be no thieves there. Won't be no liars there. Only brothers and sisters in the yeah. Lord. See, those that died yesterday yeah. gonna come with him first. first. Yeah. He's gonna raise them first and they're gonna come with him in the air. Yeah. Those of us that remain gonna be caught up yeah. to meet him. And somewhere in the air, that's gonna be a family reunion. Somebody say, we're gonna dance all over glory. We're going to sing all over glory. We're going to shout all over glory. I won't just see the Lord, but all of us that's in the Lord, there's going to be a reunion. Mama going to be there. Daddy going to be there. Brother going to be there. My son's going to be there. Many of your family going to be there. We're going to shout the harvest over. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Uh, 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 I used to like a lot of you. I used to be afraid of death. I used to wonder what my end gonna be like. But the longer I've been with the Lord, I come to the conclusion: death, you have no power over me. Because I heard Doctor Bill read it. He said, "Oh, death, where is your sting?" Oh, grave, where is your victory? Yeah. The sting of death is sin. Yeah. The victory of the grave is the law. But thanks be to God who delivered us, gave us the victory. I don't worry about that anymore because what I realize is that I'll be somewhere else before I ever realize I was dead. All right. I don't believe you're hearing me. Yeah. See, it's like this sometimes, and you may be like me, the older I get, I, I got an easy chair. And I start off watching the news or TV. And I get it just right. Yeah. My neck gets cramped up, but I get it fit just right. I, yeah. I, I raise the feet up a little bit. I right. get me a glass of soda or, or a glass of water. Yeah. I'm just about ready to 
watch the news on my favorite show, but, but something happens. Yeah. I fall off asleep. sleep. Yeah. And sometimes when I wake up, yeah. everybody's gone to bed. But you know what? That's what death is like to the believer. Come on, come on. I don't know when I went to sleep. I don't know how long I slept. Yeah. All I know that in the morning, yeah. Yeah. Right. when I, I woke yeah. up, that's what it can be for you if you trust him, if you live right, if you put your faith in him. In the morning, you won't know whether you died or not. Joe was living again before he ever knew he died. Okay. Three words of comfort. Now I'm going to put your faith in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died. He was buried and raised again. But the scripture, whoever, whoever does that shall have eternal life too. Number two, believe that he's coming back again. Whether he comes today, tomorrow, it doesn't make any difference. It's when he comes to you that makes a difference in the world. And remember that there's going to be a reunion of all of those who die in the Lord, those who remain that's in the Lord, there's going to be a reunion. Paul said, then I'll know even as I was known. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the believer's hope. Doesn't mean we don't weep. Don't mean we don't cry. We weep just because we're missing the one that's gone but not weeping as if we'll never see them again. If this life was it, oh, how miserable we would be. Joe was a great 96-year-old kid, but I bet, he, I bet he was a better 50-year-old. Better 40-year-old. When you don't have the Lord, this is all there is. It ends right here. But when you have the Lord, you got a better hope. You got a new hope. You got the promise of being together in our youthful years. No longer stricken by age, no longer having pains or misery, no longer having one, but living forever in the presence of God with each other as sisters and brothers. I'm finished, uh, Pastor Waller, I'm from a big family. There were 19 in my father's family, 12 in my mother's, and Lynn and I filled our house up with others. But that's nothing like the reunion of the real family. It's gone on before me. Those I never knew in this life yes. will spend an eternity yes. getting to know each other again. Yes. Isn't that some good news here? Yes. I don't know whether they'll have fried chicken there or not. I don't know. I don't know if they'll have yeast rolls there or not, but whatever it is, it'll be better than anything we got here. Can the church say amen? amen. Can the church say amen? amen? Can you say with me, I believe on the Lord Jesus. I believe that he died for me. I believe that when he was buried, I was freed from the penalty of sin. I believe that while he was in the grave and he started getting up, I was freed from the power of sin. I believe through the sanctifying process of the Holy Spirit, I'm freed from the presence of sin. And we shall live forever. We shall live forever. We shall see each other. But this is encouragement for the believer. Not everybody for the believer. Not just one that says I believe, one whose life equals believing. This is our promise. Isn't God good? I'm going to sing something. I want all those who are not in the family to stand. No, just stay seated. Let's stay seated.
number one would surely be me. I thought, thought I could be what I wanted to demonstrate your love for one another over and over and over again. I thought yes. I could build on life sinking sand. Yeah. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Yeah. I thought, yeah, 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 number one would surely be me. I thought, thought I could be saved. Why don't you do it today? What I wanted to be. Believe that God raised him from the dead. I thought and you shall be saved. I could build that's where you on a life sinking sand. Lord, I can't even walk. Sing that, Johnny. Without you holding I Walk yes. without you holding my hand. You know the mountain's too high and the valley is too wide. I'm down on my knees. You hold in my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. You know the mountains are too high. And the valley is too wide. I'm down on my knees where I learned to stand. Lord, I can't even walk. Lord, I can't even walk Lord I can't even walk without you holding my hand all oh, but the family stand To be at the meeting, I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting when all saints get on. After the
the separating of the right and the wrong. I want to be in a meeting around the throne. Listen, when I get to heaven, I walk those streets of gold. Unbuckle my sword from my side and stick it in the golden sand. Talk to God the Father. I'll talk to God the Son. Oh, then we can have a meeting around the throne. Yes, I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. Yeah, I want to be at the meeting when all saints get home after the separating of the right and the wrong. I want to be at the meeting around the throne. Listen, when we get to heaven, we'll see Joe standing there. He'll say, God Almighty. Here come my people, uh, uh, they must got here by prayer. Trouble will be over, sorrow will be gone. Uh, then we can have a meeting around the throne. Yes, I want to be at the meeting, Jesus. I want to be at the meeting, yeah. I want to be at the meeting. When all saints get a home After the separating Of the right and the wrong I want to be at the meeting Around the throne Last verse When I get to heaven I'll meet my mother there She'll say, God Almighty Here come my child He must got here by prayer Trouble will be over, sorrow will be gone. Oh, then we can have a meeting around the throne. Yes, I want to be at the meeting, Jesus. Yes, I want to be at the meeting when all saints get home after the separating. Of the right and the wrong I want to be at the meeting around the throne Yes Jesus